Typhoon Prakaroon closing in on Vietnam on today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for July 22nd. Well, one storm has become a typhoon, but it's not the one that we thought was going to get there, at least not first. It's Praparoon that's moving into Vietnam now through the Gulf of Tonkin and has also turned further west than expected. So it could be a surprise impact there for some areas. Uh, so it's quite urgent that we get this message out. It's about to strike Vietnam later tonight. Day 52 of Atlantic hurricane season and there's no areas of interest to talk about right now. Just a few thunderstorms are brewing across uh, the Yucatan Peninsula and Central America in general. In the Eastern Pacific, we're now giving a 30% chance for this area of interest. Could it be our next name storm of the Eastern Pacific? It's been such a quiet start to the season. I've said it many times, but it still remains true. Um, it is appallingly quiet. Of course, in the Western Pacific, it's made up for its recent quiet. And of course, Typhoon Prapirune is quite powerful, 75 miles per hour. We'll be making landfall soon. Tropical Storm Gamey as well, close to Typhoon strength and should become a Typhoon tonight or early tomorrow morning. And in the North Indian Ocean, we have no areas of interest right now. Just a lot of a uh, stringed along cloud there across the uh, central and southern parts of India. They think of getting quite a lot of rain there as well. And in the southwest Indian Ocean, uh, a bank of cloud there, quite a large bank of cloud, but nothing in terms of any tropical activity. No areas of interest, uh, but a few areas of rain for the Seychelles. Let's get on to the big business of the day then. First of all, Tropical Storm Gamey, which we're still giving 65 miles per hour, but it is getting closer to the typhoon's strength. It is currently 305 kilometers from Santa Ana, 404 from Vasco, 652 from Taitung in Taiwan, 687 from Ishigaki, Japan, and 838 from Taipei. It is still moving rather slowly at this time. Motion, I think, was something around 13 miles per hour. Um, it is expected to speed up a little bit more as it heads towards the Japanese islands and Taiwan. Will it make a direct square landfall on Taiwan? Well, that's still the big question right now. It looks like it could be trending back towards that indeed. Well, this is Prapirun, just 90 kilometers from Halong, 122 from Haiprong, 211 from Hanoi, 260 from Nanning, China, and 303 from Vin. So moving northwesterly at this time uh, and is actually probably still intensifying just a little bit so it could be slightly stronger when it reaches the shore uh, currently eight, uh, 75 miles per hour pressure 984 millibars uh, could we see slight further strengthening maybe but time is of course of the essence well let's check satellite imagery of the two storms then and here they are side by side on the same frame uh, on the left hand side is Typhoon Praparoon, on the right hand side is Gamey, not quite as strong but uh, much larger it has to be said. Um, Praparoon has certainly um, profited really from its uh, rather small appearance compared to the other storm and you can see them both progressing their northwesterly movement for Praparoon there heading towards the coast of Vietnam and it really doesn't look like it's going to be curving towards the northeast which is what uh, earlier modeling was suggesting. As a matter of fact the model are now suggesting that it'll turn left even further as it continues on now uh, and move through the whole of northern Vietnam and then off towards the rest of the Indochina region really. Uh, blowing up large amounts of convection so we should be seeing some significant rainfall from this and of course some strong winds when it makes landfall of typhoon force uh, but we are expecting at least 400 millimeters of rain possible in the storm <clears throat> and what we can see on the satellite imagery here is it's going to be all on the southern side more than anything where it's got this massive hunk of cloud uh, tops and this is radar imagery and pardon the poor quality of it just focus in on the eye there and you can see that it is getting a decent appearance on that imagery you actually saw two of them 
That was because of a radar glitch showing two different radars there. Well, this is uh, Gamey there moving more northerly now, and uh, it's still struggling to get an actual eye wall in place. Here's the latest imagery where the convection's just died off a little bit. I have seen some even more recent frames than this, and it is starting to build back up, back up once again quite quickly. Uh, so I think that tonight will make its final push and get towards Typhoon strength, uh, and then possibly it may go further on than that. Now this is Invest 93W in the uh, wake of Gamey and really looking very poor, I don't know why it's been marked, but there it is. And this is 94W which has also been designated, it's to the east of Yap I believe, southeast of Yap, um, and I have no idea what's going to go on with that one, uh, but we'll have to wait and see, we've not marked it. Well, this is the Atlantic off the east coast of the United States. A lot of cloud cover across the eastern US today, blowing up in little fits and starts there. The Caribbean Sea also getting a few little blow-ups there as well in the western part of the area. And in the Bay of Campeche there, some decent uh, thunderstorms blowing up as well. Off the coast of Africa, there's a small tropical wave there that's uh, continuing on towards the west, possibly still on the intertropical convergence zone there. Not too much to talk about. Eastern Pacific, we're still looking out to see what exactly becomes that system that we've given the 30% to. I think it's that cell on the left hand side near the end of the frame there. This is out over the open west Eastern Pacific now, looking further west. Uh, that system is near front and center now, uh, so I do think it is that one that's going to have a chance at developing. Look how large Gamey's influence is. Cloud cover extending almost all the way down the Philippines and uh, extending in the same in the opposite direction, almost the same distance. And there is Prapirun on the right-hand side, much smaller. Even some monsoonal showers are larger than that, uh, moving on along the coast of India, looking quite impressive. And then moving into the Arabian Sea, a lot of cloud cover in the area as well. Still lots of rain in the region, uh, pushing out over towards the west. Well, sea surface temperatures are still gradually increasing along the coast of Mexico in the eastern Pacific. Temperatures in quite a few spots now pushing over 30 degrees Celsius, so looking good. It only takes one in the eastern Pacific. In the Atlantic, we already had that one, uh, but still temperatures are increasing in the northern part of the Gulf of Mexico. Wide open Atlantic as well, really high temperatures all across the board there. Very impressive. Western Pacific also extremely impressive. No wonder both of these storms are strengthening. Prapirun, especially in the northern Gulf of Tonkin, where temperatures are 32 degrees Celsius. Ahead of, Prapi, uh, ahead of Gamey as well, those temperatures are still increasing. And in the North Indian Ocean, off the coast of Odisha and West Bengal, we still have that warm spot there, around 30 to 31 degrees Celsius. In general, the basin here is looking pretty normal. Well, compared to average, this is how it does look. Uh, in the Atlantic, of, of course, still well above average in a large part of the basin there. There are one or two spots that are a little bit below. Similarly, in the Eastern Pacific along the equator there, uh, trying to do a little La Nina thing going on there. But in general, in the Eastern Pacific, it is above average, around two degrees. In the Western Pacific as well, it is above average. Northern part of the South China Sea, off the coast of China in general, very warm. And through the Ryukyu Islands and off Japan, extremely warm. Oceanic heat content is still bubbling as well in the Western Pacific. Quite a few areas of very high amounts. Gamey already tracked through some of the highest areas there as it was trying to develop. I suppose that's the reason why it's got such an extensive outflow. But looking further north uh, off some of those Japanese islands, still a few little opportunities there as well. Not much to say about the Eastern Pacific. Here's the Atlantic, a Caribbean Sea, still a long trail of very high oceanic heat content there. Lots of energy, but maybe another Caribbean cruiser later on in the season. But it's not going to be yet, because it's not on any of today's computer models. This is day one to five, looking at the GFS short range, and it is showing this potential system in the Eastern Pacific. Not all models are on board with this yet, and even the ones that are generally have a weak tropical depression. Uh, GFS goes a bit further there and calls for a weak to moderate tropical storm, generally moving west-northwesterly there. Really starts to form 25th, 26th, so we're talking day three or four, 30% I think is a fair number. These two storms, typhoons, moving into Vietnam there, Rune and 
decides to, I don't know what it does after that. And then of course Gamey there, strengthening quite a lot on the run up to its potential landfall in Taiwan. Still some uncertainty about it, but it is looking more likely that it will be a square on landfall uh, quite close to the northern part of the island uh, as a powerful, probably category two typhoon there. I reckon the peak just before landfall is actually category three. Regardless of its strength though, it's going to be rainfall that's going to be a massive factor in this storm. Look at how much the storm dumps over southern Taiwan. Huge amounts there. We'll get onto that in just a second. Just want to point out the coast of Vietnam there, probably getting up to three to maybe 400 millimeters and then pushing on inland by quite a way as well. Look at this, 62 inches of rain for southern Taiwan if the storm makes landfall further north and gets the much wetter south side. I'm trying to figure out just how many millimeters that is, over 1500 millimeters. And in parts of the Philippines, we could still see another 500 millimeters on what's already fallen. Well, in the longer range, day 5 to 10, this is the Eastern Pacific showing what's left of that tropical storm moving off, drifting off towards Hawaii. Doesn't quite get there though. And then maybe a second system starting to form in the first week of August. This is August now, and we're still only talking about maybe the third storm of the year in the Eastern Pacific. Really dreadful performance from the basin. Although having said that, it will have at least caught up to the Atlantic if that actually happens. In the Western Pacific, possible further developments. Well, there's one there off the Philippines that tries to become a tropical storm, but it gets very uh, disorganized. Uh, and then two, maybe two other systems trying to develop there at the same time next to each other, uh, moving up towards the northeast. Looks like it finally manages it actually towards the end. Out over the open Western Pacific, though, shouldn't be affecting any land areas, that system. So it does look like after these two storms, it will be back to general quiet, at least for a period. Scan the barcode and that will take you through to the Force 13 merch store where you can take a look at all of our items as well as our full season and individual storm animations on request and are still waiting for Hone t-shirts still available as well uh, just like Hone is still available and waiting to be chosen. Well, in the silly range, we're not going to see it. I'll just put that out there. Uh, but we will see, uh, according to the GFS today, a substantial hurricane there, maybe a major, moving off towards the west-northwest, uh, past the coast of Mexico. Maybe a second storm behind it as well, also becoming a substantial hurricane. That's more like it, Eastern Pacific. Uh, wouldn't be surprised to see something like this. It's got Something's got to give in this basin, and we should start to see some significant storms forming soon. Um, we really should see at least some hurricanes come on uh, but we'll see what happens Western Pacific uh, looking at that system again getting this I don't know what it's doing there uh, seems rather unreasonable to me eventually moving off towards the north it's a very large system uh, becoming a typhoon again there off towards the northeastern part of Hokkaido and some of its uh, associated islands and then towards the end of this loop right at the end of this run day 16 so don't take any of this on uh, on face value uh, eventually another system forming on the tail end of a front there uh, pushing off towards the northeast and looks like all hell may be about to break loose well back on this day actually quite somewhat similar situation we had typhoon ivy on july 22nd at 1974 50 years ago about to make landfall in southern china to the west of macau i think on that imagery there it might be hong kong radar uh, we also had tropical depression 13w which is in a similar location to what that long range system was at and tropical depression 10e in the eastern pacific yes even in the quietest year on record for the pacific i think it was or well, one of um, it was number 10 already in the Eastern Pacific and here we are in this year we're only at one. Well we are code red a very serious situation with what's going on in the Western Pacific. In the Atlantic though the next name is Debbie, in the Eastern Pacific it's still Bud and in the Central Pacific it's still Hone as it has been for nearly five years. Oh dear. In the Western Pacific, the next name isn't going to provide as much comfort. It's Maria. And in the North Indian Ocean, the next name is Asna. Happy Room being the second typhoon of the year so far. It feels like a long time ago since we had Iwinia, doesn't it, already? And in the uh, Australian region, the next name is Robin. Southwest Indian Ocean, Ansha. And in the South Pacific, it will be Pitta as we start off the Southern Hemisphere later on in the year. 
That's all from today. We'll be back again with another tropical weather bulletin or live event tomorrow. Become an ultimate fan today.